Hey guys, Ryan King here for Worship Artistry. In today's video blog, I'm going to answer a question that I get probably more than any other question, and that is, what app are you running on your iPad? Well, if you've ever watched any of the lessons that I teach or the YouTube teasers or anything like that, you probably noticed that I have an iPad on top of my keyboard here, and I use it quite a bit. And in short, the app that I'm running is called Omni TR, and it's made by a company called Spectrasonics, who makes just a fabulous virtual instrument plugin called Omnisphere. Now, uh, Omni TR is a proprietary app. It's uh, basically a remote control for Omnisphere. Omnisphere is a software plugin that you run on your computer, and it's a great uh, synth program. It's probably the best out there in my opinion. It's got huge versatility, dependability, it's got lots of power, lots of features, ease of use, and again this is a software plugin so it has to run inside of a host software like Pro Tools, um, Logic, MainStage, something like that. So you would open up one of those programs, create an instrument track, and then open this plugin inside of it. Now as opposed to being a standalone software, software like uh, Native Instruments Complete Package where you can open up Contact and it just kind of stands alone. You don't have to have a host software. Spectrasonics Omnisphere along with a few of their other plugins like Trillion, uh, Stylus, those sorts of things, they are plugins. That means you have to have a host software. So before you even take the jump into purchasing Omnisphere, you have to have a host uh, software. And probably the most uh, uh, inexpensive one out there is called MainStage, which I use all the time when I'm playing live. I use Pro Tools when I'm recording, but when I'm playing live, I use MainStage. And so you open up Omnisphere inside of your host program, you get it all set up, and then you open up this app. Now one of the keys to it is that both your computer and your iPad have to be on the same wireless network. So if you've got a Wi-Fi signal somewhere, you can connect both of them to that. Uh, if you want kind of more of a direct connection, and especially if you don't happen to have a Wi-Fi connection, you can create your own network on your computer and point your iPad to that. But regardless, both have to be on the same network. And in addition to that, in order for the Omni TR app to recognize Omnisphere, it has to be open and running. So once you've got that, then all you have to do is open up the app, and so that's what we'll do now. And when it opens up, you'll have kind of a beginning screen here. It says connect, we'll click that. And then you have where you can select a host. Now, what that means is that inside of your software where you're running Omnisphere, you can have multiple instances of Omnisphere. Now, right now, I only have one instance. Anytime I'm recording, I usually only use one instance because Omnisphere is a, uh, it, it's very CPU intensive, and most of the time I can get everything done that I need with one instance. Whereas if you use MainStage, MainStage uses a thing called a concert, and inside of that concert, you open up patches. Each patch could contain its own instance of Omnisphere. So if you're using Omnisphere, say in five patches, and like I'll, I'll set up my concert with uh, five different songs. So every patch for every song, and each one of those patches could have Omnisphere. And if it does, then here on the host, you would actually see five separate hosts. So when you look at it here, you can see right now I only have one instance. Versus if I had MainStage open and I had you know several uh, different instances open, if I had three, you'd see three on the iPad. If I had five, you'd see five on the iPad. And so you have to just choose which one you want to control. So right now, I'm just gonna select the first one right here. And then it opens up, and this is kind of your beginning screen here. Now again, OmniTR is just a controller. There's no sounds coming out of the iPad. It's just a controller for Omnisphere, and it only controls Omnisphere. You can't control anything else. It's built specifically for Omnisphere. So if you go out and you purchase OmniTR and you don't have Omnisphere, you've just kind of wasted your money, and you'll just have to you know, save up some money, spend about 500 bucks for Omnisphere before you can actually use it. And so, but once you do, both of them can talk to each other. Now, the thing that's cool about this is I can control a lot of parameters, but one of the things is that you have to set up uh, everything that you want to inside the program itself. So whatever software you're using, once you open up Omnisphere, you're gonna set Omnisphere up uh, for however you're gonna wanna play back on it because this is really just a remote to choose sounds, modify sounds just a little bit, but outside of that, you can't really go and select sounds um, 
in a big way in the app. It's just for controlling. It's really just for live performance. So right now, the first thing that you see here is kind of our multi-view. On the left-hand side here, you can see uh, different patches here that I have either loaded up or not. If they're not loaded, it'll say empty or it might even have a dash. But you can see several different ones and you can see it's one through eight. Now something to know is that Omnisphere is a multi-part um, synth engine and you can have up to eight parts and each one of those could be a combination of different kinds of patches. And so right now I've got about five patches loaded up, six, seven, and eight are empty. So you, I can choose between different sounds by simply touching them and then you can latch different sounds, you have volume sliders, you have mute solo. So that's kind of the first um, view right there. You can also select different multis. Um, a multi is just when you combine a bunch of different parts together and you have what we call a multi or performance kind of mode. And so you can select, if you save different multis, you can open those up from the iPad here. So this is kind of your main screen right here. Um, and what you can do is, like I said, you can choose different patches. So right now I've got pipe organ selected. You can hear that that is just the pipe organ and nothing else. But if I go back to it and I select the next one called Rusher, it's a pad. So you can see how I can just easily select a different patch and I can go on down. If I come down here to Falling Skies, You can see that's a nice arpeggiated kind of synth and I just selected it and played it. I can also choose between just a single one or I can combine several of these together. So if I select say all, uh, all the top four here, You can see how I can easily combine different sounds together. I can also control the volumes, mute, solo, and that sort of thing. Now this is just gonna be an overview. I'm not gonna go in depth into what this app can do. I'll actually do that in a 101 lesson. And if you're not signed up for Worship Artistry, you need to do that so that you can act, have access to these 101 lessons along with all of our different song lessons and things like that. And it can really help you uh, become a better musician. And so again, this is just an overview. So that's our first screen there. If we go to the next screen, We've got different, uh, this is called the orb. So if I come back here and say select this pad and go to the orb, you can see how I can customize the sound. So that's kind of a cool little effect that you can do. The orb is really great. It can do all sorts of uh, just kind of random sounds if you want it to. You can do patterns and such. And so it's a really cool feature. Next is our mixer view. And here we can kind of customize some of the sounds. We can change levels, pans, uh, filter cutoffs, all that sort of stuff. So if I, if I play the sound here, You can see right there how I had a nice pitch bend and it was nice and fluid. And again, it's not a hardware thing. I'm just sliding my finger and that, that kind of feels really, really good when you do that. So that's kind of the mixer view. You can customize several different things. If you want to, you can change parts. And then finally, we have our live mode. Now, this is what I use quite a bit. This is what you see most of the time whenever I'm playing. I've already got my sound set up and then I just want to have some big buttons that I can choose from when I'm having to change sounds. So for instance, if I had the first three selected and then if I want to add all four, I could add all five if I want to. So 
So you can see how it's easy to change sounds. And then most of the time, I'll always have an empty slot so I can just kill all the sounds together. If I press empty, you don't hear anything. So again, that's your live mode. Uh, Omnisphere just has uh, so much versatility. You can actually do a lot more with this app, but that's kind of the main thing that I use it for is just to change sounds, have eight different parts loaded up. Now, a lot of times, depending on your computer, uh, your computer may not be able to handle eight parts. There are times where I've had eight parts going, and if you got all of them going, even my computer, and I got a fast computer, a big, a big strong computer, and uh, it'll, it'll just kind of freak out, and it'll be like, no, I'm not playing that right now. So um, you have to have a strong computer in order to load up all these kinds of sounds. But again, this app is called OmniTR. It's made by Spectrasonics. It's a proprietary app that controls Omnisphere. It's only a controller. There are no sounds that come out of it. It's just a controller. And I use it mainly for my live mode where I can choose different sounds. And this really helps in kind of blending. A lot of times I'll have sounds uh, coming out of Omnisphere. I'll also use uh, a few other virtual instruments like Ivory for pianos. I'll use native instruments for like B3s and um, electric, you know, like Fender Rhodes kind of sounds. And so I'll have to combine this in addition to this little controller over here on the side, which is just a eight channel little MIDI controller, eight faders. Uh, every fader has record, mute, solo, and some knobs at the top, as well as some uh, transport controls and, and that sort of thing. And so each one of those could represent a different virtual instrument, and I can customize the volume. So in addition to the eight parts that I have in Omnisphere, I have a lot of other options as well. And so there have been songs where I'll have an acoustic piano, a B3 organ, a Fender Rhodes, as well as everything else that I'm doing inside of Omnisphere. And so I have to kind of uh, navigate using both this and and mutes and fades and you know all that kind of stuff. So again, I hope this gives you an idea about what this app is and it really answers the question. It's called Omni TR. It's made by Spectrasonics and it's specifically for Omnisphere. Omnisphere is a fabulous uh, software virtual instrument plugin. It has to run inside of a host software, but if you've got that, you can spend about I think it's 30 or 40 bucks on main stage. Omnisphere runs about $500, uh, but it's totally worth it. You might think, ooh, that's, that's a lot of money, but trust me, I bought this thing years ago and I've not regretted it ever. It's one of my go-to um, virtual instruments that I use all the time. And so if you really wanna sound like Hillsong, Jesus Culture, all these other guys that are out there doing it, Omnisphere is the way to go. So again, I hope this gives you a better idea in, uh, in using it. If you've never used it before, maybe it gives you a little bit. Make sure that you're signed up for Worship Artistry so that you can check out the 101 lesson that will be coming out very soon on how to use OmniTR.